set? Yep. Actually, I'll get this so I can, this is more, more my comfortable way to turn. There we go. Awesome. Good morning, David. Hey. Uh, thanks, for, thanks so much for joining us on Tiffin Box. Uh, this is a, a great treat for me and I'm sure for a lot of uh, Tiffin Box viewers as well. Um, a few questions for you. For you, I know you're on a, on a very, very busy schedule, so I want to keep this bit, very yeah. short. We're all right. We're all right. <laughs> Good. Um, I think one of the one of the major questions I had in mind when I was thinking about what to ask you is, um, when you have a, such a great number of people following you, um, what is it that 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 actually helped you create the sense of community within them? You know, what what is it that brings people to you? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I think that. If you're, if you're doing something people are interested in, if you're doing, for me the mark is, you're either doing one thing or you're not. You're creating content that is interesting enough for someone to want to tell their friend about it, or you're not. And you're in the A stack or the B stack based on that. And everything flows from whether or not you make that A stack. If your content is good enough for people to want to tell other people about it, your marketing is pretty much solved because it's going to handle itself automatically. If it is not good enough for people to want to tell their friends about it, then no matter how much marketing money you throw at it, you're just buying readers coming in, so that can get very expensive. Um, if you're also creating enthusiastic fans, they're going to start to coalesce, especially if you give them the venues in which to do so. And, and for us, it's obviously the Flickr group, which has like 80-something thousand members at this point. Uh, so if, if you're doing that one thing, a lot of good things flow from that. And if you're not doing that one thing, a lot of bad things flow from that. Was the Strobus movement um, a lucky accident for you? I mean, was it, was it just something that you said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a uh -huh. newspaper photographer, but I'm going to start doing this on the side? or? I mean, how did it all come, come together? Oh, it was all part of a perfectly orchestrated diabolical plan. I mean, I knew everything that was going to happen before. You know, it, it, I just wanted to leave some breadcrumbs, honestly, for photographers behind me. I figured maybe a couple of hundred photojournalism students and uh, maybe a couple of dozen young pros would be interested in it. And that was fine. I mean, that was, that was what was my goal. I had no idea that any of this would happen. And, and when it started to happen, I was pleasantly surprised and, and learned everything I could to, to keep... To, to keep feeling this group as a unit and, and having them kind of come together and start to create a little more of an ecosystem than just like a one-way information flow. You know, Seth Godin talks about um, creating a tribe. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like you've, you've done that? I think we've created more of an asylum maybe than a, a tribe. Uh, it's a little crazy around here at times and that's cool. It keeps it fun. But the internet is very cool. You can take people that were, were very widely spread out and interested in one niche and pull them together without regard to geography. Um, I would say that in 2005, there could not have been a magazine started up uh, with the basis of small flash photography. The market wasn't there. It would have been too expensive to do. It was too niche. And, and yet, by, by picking one person from here and another person from over there, and this guy from the Ukraine, and this guy from Iowa, and this lady from Washington, D.C., you can start to pull together a, a, a neat group. And it's a very self-fulfilling prophecy once it gets going. It's terrific. Now, you, before we started rolling, uh, you'd mentioned some project that you were working on, a, a very special project. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I spent 20 years as a photographer uh, with the Baltimore Sun and other newspapers. And I, even though I'm a blogger now, I'm always going to be a photographer first. That's, that's what I do. I don't want to be that guy who blogs and doesn't really shoot that much. I'm a photographer who blogs. And HOCO360, H-O-C-O-360, is, is a local, very local-centric photo site that I started a few months ago. And what you're going to see is that starting to become my new vehicle. It, uh, it absolutely has a, 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 um, a, a commercial kind of a bent to it. Ultimately, I'm not just doing it for fun. It's an experiment combining what I've learned with 20 years of being a newspaper photographer and five years of being a blogger and seeing if we can mesh that together in a day where everything seems to be like the sky is falling. I don't necessarily see that as the case. Newspapers are, are falling because they've got to pay drivers and buy trucks and, and kill trees and, and send out day-old news, and I just don't think that's the model anymore. We aren't the problem. It's the infrastructure that's the problem. We can push a button and have a picture be viewable by literally billions of people instantly on the Internet. So I have to think that if you can do that with almost zero cost, there have got to be very interesting economic models popping up. And, and I'm very much trying to do that with HOCO 360. So, so you know, just you know, stay tuned, I would guess. We'll see if it works. But I've got a lot of interesting ideas getting thrown at it. And I'm actually pretty optimistic about it. It's starting to go pretty well. Thank you so much, David. This sure, is, man. This is, again, a real treat for me, and I, I, I really thank you for your time. Well, I appreciate it, and it's great to be on Tiffin Box. Great.